is like damp number maybe 30 to say something that's not but it's not going very well the point is that i'm starting a travel around the world tomorrow and um let's see how it goes <laughs> At the time of the recording I was 28 years old and I had a long-lasting dream to travel around the world and record the process day after day. For about 4 years prior to the departure I studied and worked abroad but I had no real backpacking or solo traveling experience. The only thing I knew was that I loved making videos and I was looking for a thrilling story to tell. And 5 years after origination of the idea, there I was taking the surreal first steps of this journey. This is our town. Gotta get to the nearest highway entry. It's a crazy cosmic journey, I feel fine. Objective number one, hitchhike to Paris. I finally got to the uh, gas station when I'm gonna try to catch a ride. Ideally, I'd get to Czech Republic today, but uh, well, I'm gonna really take things slow since uh, it's the first day. Czech Republic doesn't seem to work very well. This is our time. I just got into my room. I think I'm just gonna chill for a while. I took a one today. Normally I'm planning to sleep in, uh, in shared rooms just to meet new people. So that's my relax driver. I'm uh, currently in a waste disposal truck. That is it. One guy just dropped me next to Brnov. It's around five kilometers to the nearest uh, hostel. So I'm gonna crash there tonight. Overall, I knew Europe pretty well. In such a familiar environment turned out to be a perfect playground for my first hitchhiking and solo travel experiences. I'm waiting for the laundry to finish, preparing a gimbal in the meantime. When it comes to the budget of my travel, I had 24,000 euros of savings, out of which six I would spend prior to the departure for things like travel insurance or a backpack, but primarily really for my new camera with some extra lenses, a gimbal, a drone, a lightweight laptop, memory banks and the rest of my filmic equipment. This left me with 18,000 euros for the estimated 9 months of travel. I'm uh, leaving the hostel right now and heading to Germany today. Just so that you know, the first wave of nostalgia hit me on day number 5. I did feel overwhelmed by the magnitude of the challenge. And despite all the support from my close ones, I knew that now I was on my own. We just entered France. Bienvenue en France. <laughs> right now we're heading to the to the airport from where we're gonna well he's going to Paris. I would have loved man to take you with me in the train, <laughs> but I only have one ticket. <laughs> I got stuck in Strasbourg yesterday. Not according to the plan really. On my way to Paris right now. Finally after two hours of waiting, I got a ride with uh, kind friend gentleman my savior that just picked me up um, dropped me maybe two kilometers further down in some shithole right now yeah I'm back in Strasbourg 
Somebody give me a lift from uh, from the middle of these fields. I just arrived to my uh, friend's place. The cool man is making the dinner. <laughs> Yesterday was such an interesting day. Just this five hours. It's not working. Another place. Not working. Another place. Police moves me somewhere. Oh, I just wanna lay down on the road and start crying and die. And then, bang like that. I'm in Paris. Give me that cheddar, weekend, Rico. Big money rolls like burritos. Give me that hot sauce, no pico. Give me that. Give me that. Give me my slippers. Just reached the gas station, so I'm just gonna make the board now and um, start looking for a lift. Since the hitchhiking thing was working pretty well, but it was also all-consuming, I decided I was gonna hitchhike down to Barcelona and switch the buses from there. I've been swinging like some jello. You got one in the fun guy, he gets some portobello, so I guess I need some grease up on my elbow. Yeah. But now my light turned yellow. And I've been looking for the cheat code. Life don't come in a neat bowl, bringing the receipt home. You know, yeah, you good start so far. Keep your head up and your seat pulled back. Uh, how do people Get a driver like taking me to Barcelona. 22 years on a personal brand. Uh, nah. uh, nah. yeah. I just checked into a new place. I'm gonna go to uh, some Gaudi's Park right now. It's called uh, Park Gully, Park Gully, something like that. After learning that it's called Park Gue and that all the tickets were already sold out, I joined millions of tourists and began sightseeing in the cities of Spain. Sleeping in a bus is definitely better than nothing, but it's also not ideal. So I could definitely use some sleep in a hostel. We'll do it soon. I must say, I was getting tired of big city vibes of Barcelona and Madrid. Malaga, with its mellow atmosphere, was the perfect place to rest a while, as I was getting closer and closer to the southern edge of Europe. Sun is gonna rise in two hours or so. I decided it's uh, worth waking up so early. The plan is to see the monkeys in Gibraltar. I just arrived to the bus station, so I have 15 minutes. So, unhealthy breakfast.
Genesis on makes the sickness of my culture We undress each other with an evil arm Our concentric circles we look like vultures When we feast on the failures of the lives we criticize Yeah, it's beautiful here. It's it's absolutely awesome. Hey, buddy. Oh shit. <laughs> it's not you, Gibraltar. It's me. There are basically two ferries that go to uh, Morocco. The one I'm gonna take it goes from Tarifa. In this culture, we fight for the spotlight with the peacock's pride, and then condescend to all the lesser men. And just like that, I get on a ferry and slightly freaked out, said goodbye to Europe. There is no power that a man can have unless it's given to him from above. Our ladders of success descend to him. Okay, I'm gonna make a tour around the hostel now. That's our private bathroom. Glass shower door. Need to intro thing. My first thought after waking up in Morocco was that I entered a completely different world. This place is so cool. A night before, everyone at the hostel was talking about some famous blue city. I thought it sounded fun enough and went straight to get a shirt taxi. It's uh, six of us, the ride should be two hours and a half long. Uh, I just get a dinner and I'm gonna have a quick walk around the city just to see how it looks. Shevchuan is a beautiful place, but walking alone at night, I had no idea how easy it was to wander off and get lost in the blue maze. The change of the plans. Okay. Now we're going to eat plantation now. Those lights, camera action when I step into the limelight. Easily adapted to the high life. Dressed to impress like it's prime night. And when you live in top shelf, you know you gotta set the bar high. Had the same dreams since we was kids. Big tips, big cars, and even bigger cribs. Never thought that it would happen just the way it did. Fast forward that now, it's just the way we live. That's good food and drinks. My mood makes you think that this life's made for a king. The room starts to shake, so smooth if you blink. You might just miss the whole thing. It's just a different way to move in the high. One of the early assumptions of my travel was to avoid flying where possible. And that meant shitloads of bus rides. But to be honest, 
I did like the nostalgia of these lengthy rides. Casablanca was just a transit point for me, so I checked Africa's biggest mosque and without further delay I jumped on a bus to Marrakech. I'm planning this uh, camel trekking in Mauritania that's supposed to happen in about uh, one week. So in order to do that I thought um, like since Marrakesh is the last big city that I'm going to visit, I was like, okay, it's going to be way easier to make uh, all the necessary shopping here than anywhere else. How do I charge that? Like put money on this through internet. Internet and giga this dirham. And giga this dirham. And giga and all. And giga and giga and all. Okay, got it. Remember when I said that I liked the nostalgia of the lengthy bus rides? Tiring as it was, after three days I arrived to the border. We still had to cross an active minefield that separates the countries, but without any issues we arrived to Mauritania. So we're gonna pay roughly, I think, one euro for uh, two people for uh, almost 10 kilometers long ride. So, uh, well done, son. Yeah, that seems uh, truly abundant. <laughs> okay, wait. <laughs> we just got back. I'm gonna make a quick round around uh, Nadibu, second biggest city in uh, Mauritania. Somebody told me there are two trains today. The train that I was supposed to have I shouldn't go with this one. Go with the later one. Got a phone call. I should go with the current one. Fuck. All right. Breathe in. Breathe out. This is one of the longest cargo trains in the world. It travels between Nadibu and the Ion Ore Mine on Sahara, but some of the locals also use it for travel purposes. There are no tickets or anything. You can just jump in and ride it for free. Okay, the train is coming. I just got in, the train arrives and you just jump into like a random wagon. I think I'm ready to go.
Finally, there is enough light to do some daylight shooting. In the mirror over there, at back. I just woke up. If it's not raining, well, it's cool because you're not wet, but then everything gets dusty. The ride is almost done. It's time to pack everything and go to the desert. Yep. So there we go, I washed everything, I charged everything. You two don't fail me. On my way to Chingeti right now from where we're gonna start the trekking. The car is really not bad, but we actually have three people in the front, five people in the back, two guys in a trunk and a goat. <laughs> Goat successfully in park. The water in here. For the next six days, we're gonna be walking across the desert, sleeping under the sky. The camels are here to carry our stuff. My guide doesn't speak any English. I think it's gonna be more a uh, meditative experience. Every day we would walk for a few hours in the morning, make a stop during the peak temperature hours. Four hours long break. I, uh, I did some reading at the beginning, then some napping, thinking, chilling. Soon it should start uh, cooling down a bit and then we can move on. There is a beautiful simplicity in this desert trek experience. Just get up, dress up. You put the turban. And then you walk. So they might still feeding the camels. I'm trying not to be useless, but <laughs> earlier with the branches that I picked up, he didn't even look at them. He was just like, he got his own. <laughs> So 
Salima left me with uh, the camels and went to look for a way through the rocks. So we're just chilling here. Okay, we found a way. Hopefully the guys will be good. We managed to make it through the mountains. Right now we just get under a tree that's actually made of butterflies. That, that blows my mind. It's in the hum of the leaves when the storm disagrees singing on your lawyer We reached the oasis. Since we're getting close to the end of the desert route, I wanted to mention the Bedouin tea that was a necessary element of every break that we had. And the other thing I want to mention is Bedouin bread that Salima would make on every other day. Salima is feeding the camels. It's about 6.30 now, half an hour more and, uh, and then I'm off for the breakfast. We're almost there, so we're leaving the camels behind. That's it, time to walk. Hey, see ya. Holy shit, that's cool. Slima left. I was told to find a guy called uh, Jamel and uh, stay at his place tonight. So yeah, let's look for uh, Jamel. Jamel, where are you? I'll just keep on walking and uh, find something. So I found this little village right over here, but uh, <laughs> not a single person alive here. No, not there. Da 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 da. Chaz Jamel Terjit. Cool. <laughs> Problem solved. It's uh, 7 a.m. I was just picked up by my driver. They just dropped me to one place. Uh, and I'm in the bus to capital city. Okay, that's it. Your love is a flood and I swim deep when the tide is up. Sweet to the world, oh, and you taste sweet too. This is my deliverance, hands held high. Is you deliver it? Oh, you have made me a child of God. My feet on the ground, my heart in heaven. I am great, made without the living. Oh, you have made me a child of God. in my head Oh, as a gift from you Your world floods my brain This gray cranium won't be the same Oh, where I've been won't do 
I got additional copies of my passport and visas. Apparently, uh, you go through the gates on the Senegal side and then immediately you're approached by a crowd of random people that want to scam you, that want to take your luggage, that want to take your passport. Everyone says to be very, very cautious on that uh, on the crossing. Crossing wasn't really that bad. Some people helped me, the big guy paid for my boat, and I was in Seneca. The taxi driver found me accommodation with an open rooftop, and without further delay, I moved to Dakar. Yeah, it was uh, a little bit lengthy ride. So getting from uh, San Luis to the car took us five hours and right now it's only 12 or 13 kilometers to my hotel. We're almost not moving. We're uh, standing in some uh, traffic jam. I pretty much forget what traffic jams are in Africa, but uh, well, here we got one. Since it was a tiring ride so far, my plan for Dakar was simply to relax. Small change of the setup. In five hours and a half, I'm flying to Cape Verde. My flight is, uh, <laughs> as far as I know, the only one that's not listed. I have no clue why. My flight was cancelled in the last uh, eight, ten hours. I just spent trying to figure out logistics. <laughs> I got my new ticket to Praia. After 25 hours, I passed the uh, security gates. So that's it. I was about to leave Africa and I ended up having a series of five separate flights scheduled for the four following days. And it was yet to be seen if the somewhat unpredictable nature of the African Airlines would make it any more complicated than that. My flight was delayed by three hours, then it turned out it's actually cancelled. Uh, we're figuring the logistics of uh, how it's gonna go and uh, how it's gonna work. But it doesn't seem to be too bad. Everyone has like this more, yeah, just go with the flow attitude and uh, people are pretty chill and relaxed about it. I got a second ticket within two days, which is not for the flight that I originally booked. It's hard to say much about Africa, because the past month left me pretty much speechless. I went through experiences I wouldn't have imagined before, and everything felt random and vastly out of my control. Eventually I arrived to South America, but my brain still wouldn't stop asking. What the fuck just happened? I invited my uh, my bestie from Poland to join me. He just got to Buenos Aires. Uh, we joined forces for one month. And that's gonna be really cool to have my best bud after two months of this <laughs> of this struggle on my own.
Mike is very, very excited that it took me only 45 minutes to get everything ready to go. This is the price of the friendship, right? Right? No, it's not. To be honest, I could have done a better job capturing how insanely crowded this place was. It was so touristy that it pretty much spoiled the experience. But let's for a moment pretend it was just like in this video. Suddenly there is uh, this waitress lady coming to us from the cafe in which we're sitting. <laughs> we're actually going in that direction. It's like, oh, don't go there because... Okay, fair enough. <laughs> we're gonna change the direction. <laughs> In contrary to Iguazu, Suntian felt almost abandoned. And we were kind of freaked out about these ghost town vibes. You look happy, bro. <laughs> Mike was like, <laughs> we're sitting in a fucking hotel, and Mike is like, dude, dude, let's go. I'm bored. I'm bored. It was like, yo, dude, you're gonna be bored at the bus station. Bus station? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Szukamy wizyt was parę ładnych. Gdzie na gdzie na gdzieczki? Ja też mam ją już nie wiem gdzie. Oh shit. <laughs> they wanted to get our uh, Paraguay entry steps that we didn't get. Worst case scenario, Max go to jail. They didn't notice that uh, I don't have. Oh, so I'm jail to my mom. Good job. Cool. Good times. Good times. It's 6:40. We just uh, got to Corrientes, and we have what like half a day to spend here. So we're thinking about a it's your boy Mikey guest house in the house we're thinking of uh, renting a boat I was kind of mean to cut into my fucking speech <laughs> so right there I don't want to be a dick well you you just were a dick so I mean fair enough yeah go on yes thank you no please, please um, yeah thanks for having me Mike for now we're discussing whether drinking beers until four is a good adventure for today or not Mike is a little bit has done stood I want to get a boat Drink on the bus. Well, it was a great try. It didn't work, but we stay in high spirits. At least I, Mike, Mike, don't cry. Don't cry. I am a failure. I am a failure. Gonna right. We rented a car instead and had continued our exploration of Argentina. Heard you pass south of Baltimore Wondering if you watch the ships roll in Will you stay up till the dawn's early light Do you ever wonder how I've been Postcard memories 
only paint a picture of how you are in one place at a time. I need you now more than ever before. I'm waiting for you to come back. Traveling with Mike was like cutting the hardships by two. Suddenly there was somebody to look after me and really just to enjoy the shared experience of this travel. It don't matter where you go when you're young and you're trying to outrun the past Like a ghost you travel through my dreams <laughs> so we decided just to crash here and do the, the entire route once you get in the morning. I need to turn the lights off or otherwise Mike's gonna kill me because it uh, attracts predators. <laughs> <laughs> attracts predators. <laughs> We were sleeping there for the past eight hours and a half or so, and it wasn't too bad, seriously. Adjust for driving positions. And we can go. Let's go! Baby, you should roll with me. Hi. All over the road with me. Yeah. I need someone in my shot. You should come roll in my shot. Baby, you should roll with me. Przez nas się na nie szansę nie ziemeczkiem kurwa chyba z węgier. Siemy trzy kurwa bierze kawę. Trzeba wpierdali tutaj te rybeczki z cukrem. Wpierdoli kurwa 11 te rybeczek z cukrem. Nie, przysięgam ci. A skier wesy szyloje to. I'm like pack your bags and tell them bye He see you with me, you ain't even gotta tell them why It's hard to find somebody like me Way up in the sky, we taking different heights and levels When we talking about fly That's, that's, that's all over the skyline All over your timeline I'm all over on prime time You know fine wine, prime rip You seeing how this guy live Best part of it all is I'm still up in my prime Bitch And that nigga is over for Ballin' but I still scratch Like Jaleel Okafor Hit me with a mill flat I show you how to double more Baby, I'll be winning. You ain't even gotta keep the score So the story goes like this We had already booked a hostel But one of us came up with an idea To do a volcano hike So we cancelled the night Rented the car And drove towards a randomly googled volcano For two hours straight, we drove through the night to arrive to the final stop at the altitude of 4,300 meters. Which, honestly, made it pretty hard to breathe. It feels a little bit surreal, seriously, like just traversing Mars or something. It's 10 to 7, it's pretty damn cold. I think it's still 3 or 4 degrees, so we're gonna wait a little bit for the temperature to rise. It's uh, it's pretty insane. I think we already have two hours of these bumps. <laughs> Don't lose weight, man. The parking should be around. Uh, An altitude of 5,000 meters. <laughs> I'm sick, I choose sneezing to keep on rhyming, I find new reasons. Yeah, don't diss me, that's treason. Me and my Eve just trying to find Eden. Till then, we keep rolling up trees. Young Dante, I'm a king, I'm a dawn on a rock, I'm a toe. Turn into a motherfucking prince when I croak. Drinking champagne, bumping prints on a boat. Wild out, looking for the boy, but I'm miles out. Finding myself in a hideout. In a dark space, I'm a climb out. Right now, wild out. Looking for the boy, but I'm miles out. Finding myself in a hideout. In a dark space, but I'm climbing out. Right now, I feel alive. 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 I have arrived. I feel alive. I feel alive. I feel alive. Keep coming alive. Keep coming alive. Keep coming live, keep doing right Tonight is not 
Come alive. Tonight is nice. Come alive. Come alive. That was intense. That was intense. What was our next adventure? Sleep. <laughs> She's in the fucking sleep. <laughs> Like dynamite, I won't apologize. If you ain't got my check, well then run and say you don't wanna see me. Wild out, looking for hey. the boy, but I'm miles out. Finding myself in a hideout, in a dark space, but I'm climbing. Right, I feel alive. Or pretty much dead. I think we're just gonna crash immediately. Should we just woke up in an empty bus? <laughs> Everyone will have to ready. We only need to figure out where to go and what to do now. So, first the Wi Fi and then get some accommodation. This is the plan. Prior to arriving to Eureka, we've spent three nights in a car, two nights in the buses, and one night in a hostel. Now, with moderate levels of enthusiasm, we welcomed yet another night in the bus. We left our luggages in the hostel and we still have, I think, seven hours before they let us check in. Mike decided to jump on a bungee to kill time. If I die, don't tell my mom, dude. I won't. So Mike just signed some papers. If you die, it's your own fault. It's Tom's fault. That's what I wrote. <laughs> bye. Hey, bye bye. Hey, bye. The lady was a little bit concerned with all the crap. <laughs> if he dies, it's his own fault. And ladies, <laughs> this, is, this joke though, but that's like literally what I just signed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There are two rainbow mountains in uh, in Peru, but the other one is closer to Cusco and it gets very, very touristy. This one is a bit further away and well, right now we haven't seen a single person here. Climbing the dune right now. Goodbye drinks. Mike is leaving tomorrow. So we're gonna celebrate on the top. Father, I've got a confession. I wanna break out of this place. Whoa. Everyone is shooting for heaven. I've been planning on storming the gate. Whoa. Oh, I can't 
All the sand just lands in your eyes. We're just gonna cry a little, drink one beer, and head back. Are you starting to get the message? I got power up in the present. So keep pushing me, pushing me, keep pushing me, keep pushing me, keep pushing me till you bring out the death. Give me death, there ain't no other choices When I lay down and go to sleep, I keep on hearing voices Little whispers in my head, man, is you fake or loyal? Why no water, death is on the baby, pick your poison These little demons living underneath my bed, creeping Know the real monster lives above them all, sleeping That subtle breathing in your closet every single evening Thought you never see me again, looks can be deceiving When they hear the sound of the drum They'll be saying, oh Lord, here they come yeah, here we come. Huh, here we come. <laughs> here we come. Here we come. I was my fucking phone. Somewhere in the sand. So we get to go once again up through all the trails. Mike found it. I'm dying. Now I'm back, altercation, hold still, I make it painless how I feel, baby When you say you love me, is a real, baby Full speed, both hands on the wheel, baby Young Taz coming from the mold field, baby You know the drill, baby, yeah And when you hear the sound of the drum We'll be saying, here we come Mike left yesterday. As for now, I'm uh, I'm checking out soon. My direction is to get to um, first Lima and then Tarapoto, which is the Amazonian triangle. <laughs> Mike continued on his way to Colombia and I moved towards Ecuador, having only four days left to travel a distance of over 2,000 kilometers. About six hours to my bus to Ecuador. I get a bed, I have enough time and space to get the shower, eat something, get my laundry done. I'm tired. I'm tired. I just want to go somewhere and do not go for a couple of days. I'm having a lot of recovery days recently. It's a lesson learned. It's a lesson learned that I need to watch the pace. And the pace that I had in South America was too intense. Dear Universe, thank you for giving me Mike to travel with and thank you for making us stop. We had the most beautiful adventures, but we're constantly pushing each other to do more and more and more. And after three months on the way, I was close to a burnout.
Okay, so the current situation is both really cool and really weird. I went to the party and the entire party I was like, it would be really cool to go to that hill over there for the sunrise and see a slot in the morning. Dark everywhere. So I hear some monkeys or whatever. not gonna lie, I was still very tired. Before I started the trip, my landlord in Amsterdam was this awesome philosopher, musician. Over time he grew into something like a says if you hear to me a little bit uh, we decided to team up for united states so he flies in from amsterdam today the plan for the following month was to travel from miami to los angeles having considered various options we decided that renting a camper van would be the best one and our car was ready to pick up right after hirard's arrival so we did manage to get the car eventually this is hirard let's go for me it was a perfect opportunity to rest a bit, because time with Hirat would be filled with lengthy conversations rather than increasingly intense adventures. And this is the camper van that became our only home for the entire road trip across the United States. We switched the roles today, so Hirat is gonna be the pilot and the DJ. Oops. And I'm gonna be the driver. Let's get it sorted. So you've been rescued by the king On my soul, sing my soul He scattered your enemies Like we hear two leaves Like we hear two leaves Scattered like the wind This is my stance. I'll show you my picture in the house of me and my cowboy gear and my wife and her. She's an Indian, by the way. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, she's Cherokee. We're living oh, yeah. proof that cowboys and Indians get along. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the day before, John bumped on us on the road and invited us to stay at his ranch. Take care, be Thank safe. You. Yes, we'll do. See you, uh, Poland. <laughs> See you, Netherlands. <laughs> be careful, gentlemen. Thank you. Yes, sir. Get down to it, and you will Get learn. down to it, exactly. Yeah. What a story, sir. Even the artist world, when I was very young, people called me an artist and I didn't want to be an artist. I didn't want to have part of art because it's, it's, a far, it's also a part of this whole circle of money making status, yeah, of yeah, yeah. organizing projects. I, I just, I wanted to be in this margin of undefined. Yes. When people would ask me, so what do you do? I would tell them, nothing. 
I took a study philosophy, it, it doesn't add up to anything and I only chose it to have no job and I can the rest of my life do nothing. So then they would, huh? It escaped their image and, and in the end it's really true. <laughs> you see? Overall, most of the experience was just driving and talking. We could have easily spent 10 hours a day discussing whatever came to our minds, and the road itself was the theme and the background of our talks. It's, it's getting rather cold. I think it was maybe minus three, minus five at night. Two jackets, two, three layers of pants, sleeping bag and just like curling the ball. Not freeze to death, which is uh, a nice achievement. And uh, we're moving on. But as much as we enjoyed each other's company, sometimes it was just too much to handle. Yeah. It's good for your seven days. It goes on the driver's side of the leash. Yeah, the sun comes up. Whoa! A sunset like this, in the middle of Texas, is not my standard way of celebrating the Christmas Eve. But it's not that we complained. And soon after entering Big Bend, we began preparations for the Christmas supper. <laughs> Breakfast part of our Christmas feast. And some tea, and we eat it, and we go. You should fail with purpose. Every project you do is a process of failure, and there's a purpose behind it. Do your thing, but it's failure. Don't think anything else and embrace it. The yeah. world would be normal to find a success. And how do you reinterpret it as a failure? So I already built in uh, this possibility of mistakes are the best part. This means improvisation. You have success by the failure of your image in the situation, which means the reality takes over. The image fails and reality takes over. You should fail out front without any hiding. And we're leaving the east side of the park and we're going more to the central park. We're gonna climb the, the highest peak. You know the challenges that you just cannot refuse? Because to us, it was one of them. We're approaching the summit, but as we approach the summit, we also approach the meltdown. Meltdown of our spirit. It was a real struggle. We quit right before the summit. Yes. To make a point. Yes. That it's not about reaching the top. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the process. Yeah. Despite all the people doubting our ability, the meltdowns on the way, the crisis, we got to the top and it's shit. <laughs>
you're playing and all, everything goes wow 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 and all of a sudden the drum plays bang and then all of a sudden we play do pa pa do 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 bang why the hell do we do that we don't know Yeah, that's how cold it is. Snow and the freezing cold. No, no, it's, it's already getting better. So, ah, new day. New day, new life. We continued the driving quest, and the plains of New Mexico looked exactly as I remembered them from the episodes of Breaking Bad. We just had a visit from the rangers. We were warned against some wild cats in uh, in this neighborhood and uh, against the guys shooting rifles at midnight for the New Year's Eve. It's seven past midnight. We made it to the New Year. So, uh, whoop whoop. I created this theater piece, and it was about what's going on in my head. I called it Rush Hour in Cairo. The subject was a guy at the, at the limit of a burnout, yeah. and he thought, "Okay, I take uh, I take a holiday. I go to Cairo, as if you could escape." Yeah. What I was trying to do is to see, as your own head is some kind of stage, there's all kind of self strategy going on. And it's very important to see it as an outside, and not as the inside. Inside, I would put all kinds of roles in dance, music and so on. And this ongoing 50 minutes of ongoing text on a super fast tempo. <laughs> so this is your brain all commenting everything all the time. It was some kind of labyrinthical text yeah. and, and, and uh, the center would be self-doubt. But normally I would see that as inside. Yeah, but I, I would state it as it's very difficult to, to have your own dreams and so on to put it outside yeah. but it's normal for every being to have it. this kind of this kind of experience and yeah, maybe i'm more but <laughs> nevertheless it's that it was highly regarded it was all all on the level of literature art and so on i thought wow Whatever I did, I don't know, but it, 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 it was a failure. The whole tool of making art didn't work like I expected it to be. And then I was so stubborn, I put it aside and made another piece. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you see. It's uh, 5 to 9 right now and uh, we're leaving towards LA. Last part of our road. Now it's time to have some tear drops. Already? Yeah, it's all day, it's about crying. Last day. Yes. I don't think there is one only road to go to get somewhere. Not at all, not at all, Thomas, not at all. I think in the end you will have to deal, but maybe at some other points and other stages in life with the same items I had to deal with. If you do what you do with the intensity you've got, yeah. You find out your limits, you find out your crisis situation, and you find out to deal with it. And I think there's not any other way. This would be contradictionary, this one road idea. No. Close your eyes, drop your head. We officially made it. To the rhythm and sing out ocean to ocean.
Kirill left. Kirill left uh, his plane to go around two hours and a half ago. And uh, I'm back on my own. I'm back on my own. My last days in Los Angeles, I would spend attending to various chores, like repairing my phone or cleaning the car. I was getting ready to move on, and after spending the last two months with Mike and Hira, I did feel the weight of continuing the journey on my own. I was just unlucky one. <laughs> Arrived here for uh, two days. Just seems to rain all of the time. You going around the world? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's good to meet you. Okay. <laughs> an hour long roughly stay in the Kiribati and I think we also crossed the line of uh, the date change it was only three more hours but technically it's uh, 15th so I thought I would have six days in Fiji in reality I'm only gonna have five That's pretty much my tropical paradise. <laughs> yep, that's what it is. At least the rain is super warm, but still, it's only raining. It's funny how quickly after feeling so low, I found this little paradise on a tiny island in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. The second day of pretty much absolute chill. The cyclone is still going around. We're actually gonna go to some other island. I think it's called Mala Mala, something like that.
local time is now coming up to nine minutes to two o'clock. The country of New Zealand is made of two main islands. I thought of driving around them, but soon it turned out that no cars were available in the northern one. Without wasting much time, I jumped on a night bus to Wellington and moved south to catch a ferry to the wild and sparsely populated southern island. I need to keep walking around the city because I slept maybe like two hours and I'm just falling asleep. It's 40 minutes to the ferry station and I still have four hours. I just got an email from my car rental company. Hi Tomas, on arrival, proceed to the parking ticket booth. There will be an envelope with your name on it, which contains keys and instructions. Magic. All is good. I rented the car for 8 days, and my only idea was to explore the island, driving forward without any particular plan or direction. I get food, I get snacks, I get music, I get batteries charged. I'm excited, it's <laughs> really just doing that alone feels like, what the fuck is happening? Oh, and since the car was kinda big enough to fit inside, I decided to fold the rear seats and turn it into a micro camper van. That's my room. It's a little bit too short to lay down straight. Not tall enough to fully extend your head, but I like it. At least as a form of uh, an experiment. Baby, oh, oh, no. So, I finished driving for today, it's, it's pretty late and I actually drove more than I planned to. And also what sort of accidentally happened, but it's symbolic in a way. New Zealand is on the opposite side of the world than Poland. I think that that's sort of like the furthest possible point. After getting unrooted for almost five months, I found myself in a random car on the other side of the world, driving with no purpose and completely alone. It gave me a dreamlike sense of freedom and in such circumstances it felt like it was easy to touch something sublime. Or it was just New Zealand.
Hello again. We want you to have a safe and enjoyable flight. So please listen closely while we take you through the safety requirements. I've been up for a minute, now I'm down for it. I've been good with the team, never bad for it. I'm a work for the winner, not a slap for it. And I live for the king, I got a crown for it. After flying to Melbourne, I've met with my high school friends from Poland and I've spent the day with Johanna walking around the city. And guess what? I've also met with my new friends from Fiji. A status update for today. <laughs> they have this relocation deal. So they need people to transport the cars back to Sydney. So I got this camper van for two days. I pay for it two dollars. I think I actually drove 300. That's how it looks from outside. Return the car, always good. The guy was, the guy was like, so where do we go next? Well, I didn't know. They all laughed at me that I didn't know what to do with my life. So that's it. My life got officially flipped upside down. What used to be exotic and dreamlike now became my daily reality. Ever changing and impossible. It rains all the time. But I was getting tired of it. And I distinctly remember sitting in my bed at the hostel and thinking, God, I gotta go and see this fucking opera. It feels like. Anyhow, I jumped on another bus and headed north along the east coast of Australia. My phone broke down in the meantime, so I bought a new one. And overall, I don't know, I guess I was just pushing forward. I got another camper relocation deal. They told me I'm gonna get two persons van. And this is for six people. Three double beds. This is huge. I like these days, it's just nothing is happening. Plenty of days when nothing is happening. I feel like I need this action versus inaction balance. The grass is so green, it's insane. And the rainbow is over there. Holy fuck.
That was my last day in the camper, and one of the few last in Australia. I still had to return the rental, and before I was ready to move on, I only had to handle some minor chores. Just like getting a haircut or... Hey man. <laughs> no way. No way. Can you do it again? Finally, I was off to Asia. And the crazy part is that despite all the things that happened to me, the most insane was still ahead. I just arrived to Gili Air. I'm walking to Freedive Flow, which is gonna be my freediving training school. So I've been scuba diving for the most of my life. But since I've never had a good opportunity to learn to freedive, I decided to stay on Gili for some time and undergo a proper freediving training. I had the morning off, so it just means me staying in bed, because why not when I can. I changed my bungalow, so this is a little bit uh, more fancy version of what I had before. My afternoon pool session starts in 37 minutes. So it came to my last freediving day, and the final impression I want to share is how incredibly peaceful these experiences can be. just arrived and I just checked in in Seminyak. I invited my parents to join me for about one week in Indonesia. They're gonna land in Denpasar in some two hours or so. So I'm gonna go and pick them up. It was quite bizarre to meet my parents in the middle of Asia, but it didn't take us long to get back to the grind. Mama's 
staring at him on the floor, she yelling. This was the last full day with my parents. On the following day, they dropped me to a nearby harbor and I took a ferry to Java Island. It's 2 a.m. I um, moved from Bali to Java. I picked up a scooter. Today was the first time I drove. I feel a little bit like a kid that's uh, getting uh, rollerblades because of how mad and like all the protection and knees and elbows and everything. Fuck, I'm really excited. <laughs> I drove through the mountains. I'm still alive. I rented a scooter for 10 days and the plan was to drive across Java Island, staying somewhere along the way. The whole distance would be slightly over 1000 kilometers and I drove anything from 3 up to 10 hours a day. Just waiting here for the rain to stop. It's fucking pouring. But as I was moving on, I had no idea that I was getting closer and closer to an abrupt end. I didn't set a final destination for today. I guess I'll just keep driving. Clearly, ideally, it'll be 150 kilometers or more. Let's get to it. One thing that I didn't know when I was renting the scooter was that Java is the most densely populated island in the world. And for somebody with no scooter experience, this creates quite challenging circumstances. Yeah, so there is a quite big change of plans. I was living a little bit outside of uh, the new scope. On 11th of March, a uh, global pandemic was announced with regard to coronavirus. It seems like the world will shut down for some time. I'll fly to Australia tomorrow to regroup and uh, come up with um, I guess we have a plan how to go back to Poland. Yeah, so I arrived to Melbourne successfully and uh, this is what I got. All travelers must isolate for a period of 14 days after they have entered Australia. Wash your hands frequently, including before and after eating and after going to the toilet. Say what? This is my uh, self-isolation house. Living in the prison. Huh? Yeah. Paro and I were planning to meet again in Asia, but after the pandemic started, I jumped on a plane and flew back to Melbourne. Australia closed the borders a day after my arrival, and we were locked together for the weeks to come. Welcome to episode 2 of Quarantine Cooking. The 
trip was over and I felt a strange sense of relief. Only at this stage I realized how much pressure I've been carrying around and I felt my body slowly loosening up after the tiring months. Yo, check this out. Right? <laughs> Look, Tomas shaved his face. I barely recognize my own face without the beard, and suddenly, the adventures of one turned into the lockdown of two. I don't know which day is that. You're just a better actor. Candles. Candles. <laughs> Your favorite fruit is eggs. Look, <laughs> pierogi. Well, we are still on the lockdown. I just finished running, Faro is painting. Okay, I decided to change the environment for a while. So I don't know, just to stay on my own. Not amazing, but it's also not terrible. I got tickets to I got tickets to Poland at night. Before I moved to Faro, we had only spent a few days together. We hoped it would stand at the test of time, but despite all the great vibes, it turned out to be too much, and eventually we decided to let it go. After the airlines cancelling few of my flights, I finally managed to get a return connection. But before I left, Faro asked me to take a few pictures of her resume, which I think is a good wrap up of this whole love story. Yo, I just arrived to the airport. All the goodbyes are finished, and um, yeah, my flight goes off in some three hours. Jesus, it's been a while. It's been a while since I was on the road. I remember looking through the window and wondering if this was some gloomy metaphor of what had been versus what was going to be. After nine months of travel, I was going back. In the middle of a pandemic, after a failed relationship attempt, lost, unemployed and broke. One could even say that it was all a failure. Yo, I officially made it to Europe. The following two years were difficult for me. I started the YouTube channel, but it barely got any friction. I lost faith in love and relationships, and everything just seemed meaningless. I followed my heart, and I felt as if it betrayed me. Eventually I fell apart, 
only to learn that falling apart was an important step of my transformation. With time I recovered, and now I'm happier than ever. But it still wasn't the end of it. Because a big part of this initial dream was to tell a story of what happened to me after I answered the call.